Hello YouTube, welcome back. Thanks for joining. Thank you for staying with me through those other videos that we've um, posted. I hope you've been enjoying them and now you're back to share with us this experience as we tour Bunce Island. So Bunce Island is one of those locations in Sierra Leone where our ancestors were being housed um, once they were taken from the villages, they were housed in this location in um, slave ports where they were waiting the slave ships to come, where the colonizers would pack them in like sardines and ship them off across the Atlantic into the Americas. You know, needless to say, going and walking the path that they had to walk in chains and in, in shackles, it was it was it was a lot. It was a very emotional, very heavy experience, but it's one that I'm glad that I was able to partake in. It really puts a lot into perspective, you know, being back in the U.S. now when you're hearing the Dutch um, prime minister issuing his apology for the role that his people played in, in, in colonization, in slavery. Um, it puts all of that into perspective because it, it, it gives me a real life um, experience and, and background in which to view those things by and know that it really doesn't mean anything. Their apology really doesn't mean anything. Um, there's nothing that they can actually say in words that could undo or repair what our forefathers had gone through. And having lived, having been to Bunce Island and seeing and feeling what took place, it just helps to put everything into perspective. Right. So it really helps to put everything into perspective for me in terms of our history, in terms of the narratives that we're hearing now from different, um, different groups. Um, so I hope that you continue to watch the video. I hope that you watch to the end. Um, click like and subscribe, share with others. And hopefully there's a lot here that you um, haven't heard before and will just enjoy. All right. here on the Bones Island. This is where our ancestors were stored or housed until they entered into that boat that would permanently take them away from their home. But we are back. We are back. More of us need to come back. Yes, yes, I know. I sound mad crazy tambourine. right now. Tambourine tree. But Watch my cousin out, and I have this see a love tambourine for tambourine. Tree. So I was just shouting her out. And it was just amazing to see something familiar. Coming from Jamaica, the house that I grew up in. We had a lot of tambourine trees in the yard. So being on the continent Beautiful and seeing tree. similar food, fruit, it was just amazing. And again, any opportunity I got to put my foot in the soil, in the water, on the sand, listen, I wasn't going to pass that up. Bones is on the northern part of Sierra Leone. 
the place I used to call the good island, or the place where human beings are living in peace. So 500 years ago, Black Sea Union, we are held captives before they were shipped to different parts of America. During those areas, Henry Lawrence and John Ben team up to buy this island from Sasso. And they transform this island to a human cargo. They consider this island to be a production site because they are having huge amounts of slaves. Vessels that we are coming here, there was always slaves available for them to take to America, for them to work in different sugar and rice plantation areas. From 1670 in those areas, black slaves arriving here. They we are walking here half naked. That's the old jersey where most of them we are walking in to Bonds Island. When they arrive here, 10 human beings will be on one chain. Even on arrival here, if there is one dead human being among the 10 human beings on the chain, they will drag the 10 the individual until they arrive at the point of sale. That's how it was going on here. And these slaves, we are arriving here. 10 human beings was going for one spoon we are using to eat today. Tobacco, alcohol, this is what these people we are exchanged for. Four different companies we are working here from 1670 to 1807. The first was the Gambia Adventure. They work here from 1670 to 1728. You have the Royal African Company. You have all sword and sergeants. Then you have Alexandra Anderson and Co., whom they consider to be the most successful two private individuals who work at the island. The sea was their deathbed on arrival at Bonds Island. If an individual fall ill or could not go through the physical exercise, both hands and feet would be tied and dumped into the Atlantic Ocean. That's why they used to call Tasso the place where dead bodies goes by or the place to wait. For to our African-American brothers who are coming, these are some of the things our own forefathers, our people we are going through. So those who make it to the shores of Charleston, Georgia, South Carolina, Connecticut, went through a lot for them to arrive. There we are not all a shackle. There we are not only chained, but there we are branded here. A piece of iron was put in fire, and then we are branding their skin because they are paying premium price for slaves living this island. Whilst we are coming here, how the slaves were acquired was we are introduced in communities by these people. They will grab the physical ones who we are physically fit, and then the old people, if they want, they could kill them or they would just allow them. There were mothers who could grab their babies coming here on arrival. Babies for them to have them here, they could say they have port or place where they used to keep them. But who could buy baby slaves? Can somebody buy a four-year-old baby slave? It would be very difficult to navigate through the Atlantic Ocean for them to arrive in England or America. These babies, hands and feet, we are tied, and they, we are keeping them at a portion. When these babies, we are crying, the crying sound attracts the sound of the alligators. The alligators will feed on these babies, and when they are lying there, they tear the belly of the alligator and remove the skin, which was sold as well. So Bones Island is a wall of two portions. We are in the connection of Sierra Leone to America and how locals we are involved in the sales of these people. Yes, our people we are selling. It was not selling for me. It was what we call the Western civilization. We used to have a local utensil. 
The bridges, we are the people, we are doing the transfer plans which we are going to community. Then we are saying to these people, give up your sons and daughters. They are coming back home for them to become teachers, lawyers, medical doctors. They never knew their sons and daughters would be chained and shackled, put on board boats to an unknown destination where they were heading to. They give them gunpowder, alcohol, tobacco in exchange for their sons and daughters. This was what was going on. It was an introduction of another business which they never knew what was happening in this other side and they never knew what is happening in the destination where they are going. On four different occasions, this island was attacked from 1695 to 1779. This was a period of 1776 when America was trying to have independence. Ladies and gentlemen, Sierra Leone contributed to the development of the world you are seeing today. Born silent alone, according to the Americans or the British, they said 30,000 slaves left this island. And Sierra Leone have over seven holy points. Of course, we have slaves who are held captive. We have horses, we have bananas, we have bones, we have cans, we have yoke, we have kitchen. So name but few. We have slaves who are held captive before they are shipped out of Sierra Leone. On arrival here, the train which you arrive is different from the one which will be on board your boat. They have a shaft of over 50 kg, more than a bag of rice, which will be employed on you for you to walk into the castle. There was three types of slave trade that was going on here. You have the sloop trade. We are in boats, we are coming here to buy slaves. These are slave buyers who don't have much money. And then you have the outbound. If you go to Kinjimi, if you go to York, if you go to Kent, you could see chains, how people were chained. They were not allowed them to stand like this. They were going like this. They could be there for like 24 or 72 hours. And here there was a castle slave trade that was going on. And the castle slave trade, you have different portions. You have the male enclosure at the back, you have the female enclosure and an enclosure for babies. Our mothers and fathers, our ancestors, walk through the same path which we are about to walk today. America had independence in 1776. And the first batch of slaves left the shores of Bones Island in 1500s. The roads you are seen in England and America were built by black slaves. 19 million slaves were shipped out of Africa. These are the people who have built Africa, engineers, medical doctors, teachers, and other people. But they were shipped out of Africa, the time Africa needed them most. And then they returned back as people who they call enslaved Africans. They did not return without chain on their hands. They were changed on arrival back in Sierra Leone from 1787 to 1808 or till date in another form as they are coming back home. So this is Bones Island. We are new to the poet who wrote the amazing grace. He said back in England, I am at the island where human production is going on. For those of us who are Muslim or Christian, did God said he produced human being or he said he made human being out of his image and likeness? If you consider a place to be a production site, meaning there was a factory producing human here, meaning for them they were not giving back to human being. If you go to New Orleans in Whitney Plantation, imagine having five slaves for one spoon. What does one spoon cost by then in England and America? They were selling one slave for $160. $130. One human being was equivalent to one house in America. Do you know how much one house costs today in America? That was one human being. But five was going for one spoon here. For gunpowder. Alcohol. Lot of them died on arrival here. Those who could not make it in here. They were dumped into the Atlantic Ocean. So this is the Bones Island. 
which has a connection to the Gola Gucci. Another means laws we are introduced. If you have an affair with a chief wife, you are going on the slave trade. If you borrowed money from somebody you could not pay, you are going on the slave trade. If you have an affair with another man's wife, another issue. But there was a sorcery that was going on in community. Because this chief wants to become rich with spoon, pot, knife for them. Then we are thinking that their sons and daughters don't want to have a better life to so become medical doctors and other things. So they, they we are saying, go to this community of these medicine men, we call them locally medicine men, in Creole, the sorcerers. In the belly of the alligator, there is something poisonous. They will prepare bread and they will go to the community and say, the elder of the family will have the bread and said, all of you are witch. If you said you are not a witch, they will say the head of the family should have the bread. And if you eat this bread and die, the entire family is going on the slave trade. This was another thing which was happening in Sierra Leone. So Bones Island, the path you are about to walk, this is the same path. If you have walked the hamster, John Quincy Adams, whom we call St. Pierre, the boat hankering out there, Mary Morgan, whose name is unknown, was later called Mary Morgan in America, walk through. This is the same path you are about to walk this morning. For you to have the tour of Bones Island and see how these people who arrive in Georgia, in Charleston, Connecticut, Rhodes Island and other parts, arrived here or left the shores of Sierra Leone on arrival in America. Slavery lasted here for 140 years. John Halkins, all of them make their way here. The two former presidents of America, George Walkin Bush, their great, great granddad was not an American. He was a British citizen. He was the first man to buy 30 slaves from Bonds Island, sold them to Charleston. He made his wealth from slave trade. After running away from tax in, America, in England, he seek asylum in America. And then he continued with his slave trade. He become rich by making slaves or making money out of slave trade. So this is the Bonds Island today, which has connection. If you go to Republic of Dominico, you could hear a place called Benz. Because the actual name was B-E-N-C-E. -E. But the Americans were pronouncing Benz as Bonds. So that's why it's called Bonds Island. And it's named across the Estuary River here, which is the Rukel River. So this is where the Gola Gucci have connection to. So with this brief orientation, if you have questions, you could ask or we start the walk and tour of Bonds Island. If you go to Smithsonian America, to the African American Museum, mm -hmm. there is a block where the slave masters were standing to auction the slaves. That's why if you want to move the hamster, on arrival they have an auction point where they are selling the slaves. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was going on. Yes, we have slaves that went to. That's why we have. Originally, they all started from here, went into the states, and then they had different ports, I guess. Yeah, they they sell them to different areas. So the one that went to West Indies, after America was trying to like close the slave trade, they were selling them to other places where slave trade was going on. But those in Jamaica, whom we call the Maroons, they were ones who who left this island. They were in England or America or Canada. Nova, Nova Scotia, they do something, they are sent to exile. So that's where they form a team which is like an army to revolt against the British. These are the third batch of slaves whom we call the Maroon Sea back. That was in like Central America, near Honduras and Guatemala, places like that, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Giving their sons and daughters. But how? There yeah, yeah, was know. also the British who are going into the community to have these young men. So, so they, they knew if they, look at, they cannot inflict wars into the community, they go with knife, spoon, and, and the same. They traded You them. could have this. Yeah, they traded. Give me your sons and daughters. They will not shackle them in front of their right. fathers. Right. They will say, give us, and then we are going with them to America to make them for them to become teachers, and for them teachers. to become lawyers. So if they come back, they will serve in your communities. Yeah. So... 
let me just give you a quick insight before we start. If you listen to the story of Baiburen, I did tell you about the story of Baiburen, who they said, yes, he fought. They said they captured Baiburen. Baiburen was born here in Putloko. There's a village, there's a chiefdom called Kase. He never knew what was happening here. Baiburen had the first hand to visit, go through the Putloko Creek, and see what is actually happening. Mm. This was the reason he fought the breaches. Mm. But the breaches are saying, because of tax, that's why he was captured. So that's why I said we need to rewrite our stories. Mm -hmm. We need to do much research and then rewrite our stories. So is it true that one of Baruri's people came um, to the British, the British people to ask for 100 pounds for Baruri? Yes. And one of his own friends for me the word soul i could not say what does we are using cowries in africa by then if you go to the museum we are using iron as money was iron coming from america then we are using those iron here by blacksmith to make money mm -hmm. cowries are in africa so why the kind of use the dollar by then what they, what they were using and by then we are using the money called african money after independence right. so why can't they use the dollar to buy the slaves why knives spoon and pots if actually we are buying them yeah. it was just the western civilization that was introduced through religion right, they were religion them. was in africa before slave trade the portuguese are the first people to bring religion to africa they were saying stop doing that you know the worship in africa was like this on an its trees like you are doing spiritual worship and they said you are worshiping a tree you don't know there is a god in heaven go to church go to mosque Pray you have all of these things. This was how the mind of Africans were changed and it moved to slave trade. They arrived as missionary, business people, not as slave masters, before they move into slavery. So that's how it works. So we could start here. Look, guys. Look. Shame old lady. We're walking the same path that our people walked to and from the boat. So they would have walked this path after having been captured or collected or bartered or traded from their homeland down this path all the way down to the water where they would have entered onto the ships. And then they again would have walked to this path when they were returned with the promise of freedom, but again, fell prey to the deception that always seems to surround us. They dug this well here for the slaves, for them to have water to drink, and for them to prepare food. So this well was dug by the slaves themselves, and they built it with the same way lime line and oyster shell, built from top to bottom. This is the gate or the point of no return. All those slaves that walk in here have two options. It's either they arrive in their destination or the sea becomes their next day. There was a wooden door here which only opens when slaves are walking in. And on top of this door, there was a watchtower with two cannons pointing west. That if pirates are coming, they have to communicate with those who are in. And all of the white people we are walking on top of this canon, the black people we are also fighting for their lives in here. So this is where thousands of slaves who left the shores of Sierra Leone walk outside and they have to walk down this way for them to be on board their boats. So we are walking inside of here and you can see
through the gate of no return. Huh? And then those two images on the right and the left side, those were doors leading into another compartment where the younger kids were being stored. It was unclear as to what would happen to them because, you know, smaller kids apparently um, won't be brought onto the boats. So I'm not sure what the full story is regarding that. But those two pictures on the left and the right, that opening where I'm standing leads into another chamber where the younger kids were stored, separated from their parents. Can you imagine being housed in these small quarters, cramped up, hundreds at a time for extended periods? Yeah. Very little window, just that ventilation. One ventilation to keep you, keep you alive barely alive and then another opening to make sure that you only get out one way so you see, all of this stuff is grown after the after the cast of land is laid here. Look at the base of those trees, man. Look at the roots. These trees are blowing me away. Right.